All right, I've had a few questions about AEC that I think we could maybe easily clear up kind of quickly. Um, so AEC stands for Automatic Exposure Control. What is AEC? Where is it? I think are some also easy answers that'll help you sort of navigate these questions. Um, your AEC is something that can help you as a technologist to produce consistent radiographic images from patient to patient. Despite their size or pathology, it's really, uh, it's meant to help you. Where is the AEC? Uh, it is in your wall bucky and table bucky. The AEC is not in the image receptor itself, right? When you go to do portable x-rays, you can't use your photo timing option, right? You have to set your own mass in KVP. You have to be in your rooms with a table bucky or a wall bucky to have access to your AEC. And so you know as technologists, you can either set your own technique or you can photo time. I think of it as a car. You have an automatic or a manual. You decide. Textbook wise, if you're using AEC, you as the technologist are setting the KVP, the MA, and you're selecting which chambers or photo cells, you'll, you'll see the terminology sort of both, you want to use for your exam. You and I both know that when you click PA chest, the settings come up on your screen. And I understand that you are not going, I want to use 117 KV at this MA station and I choose these cells. Most of this is done for us already and I understand that, but textbook wise, that's what it's doing. Your AEC is using an ionization chamber that determines the exposure time. It will terminate the exposure when that anatomy is fully penetrated. So if you get a question about what you are setting as a technologist, you're not setting the mass. You set the MA station, but not the mass because the S, the seconds, is determined by the AEC. There is a minimum response time. It's the shortest exposure time possible, and that's one millisecond. There are a couple advantages to AEC. There's decreased exposure um, repeat rates. There's um, decreased patient exposure because of, um, you know, not trying to determine your appropriate mass that you might need for that patient. Department efficiency. Uh, with less repeats because of exposure errors are just some advantages of AEC. The photo cells, which I think are an, uh, it's an old term. We're, we're using ionization chambers now, but photo cells is something you might see also. Your techs at the facility might call them. And if you look on the outside of your buckies, it's either going to be a three cell format or a five. Most of the older machines only had three, so you have a two outer, one center cell setup. This is the most common. Um, some of our newer machines have a five cell option, um, two outer upper ones and um, lower, and then still a, a center cell. If you have Clover Learning or the Red Tech Bootcamp um, account, there are two videos that I think are great on AEC. It's under the radiography image production um, settings, okay? The ionization chamber, where is it? It is behind the patient, but in front of the image receptor. Remember, it's not in your image receptor. It's in front of it and has to be in the wall that you use. The ionization chamber is going to interact with the exit radiation, which is the radiation that is passing through your patient, exiting the patient, and then before it reaches your, reaches your receptor here. So there is air in the ionization chamber, which is ionized, and an electric charge is then um, created. Where you place your chambers, or what chambers you select, and where you place your anatomy, is extremely important. AEC is great if used properly, but if not used properly, it will cause errors. So you need to think of your anatomy of interest when you are deciding which chambers to use and when you're centering the chambers over that anatomy. Okay, so some examples that you might get asked, possible questions would be, 
um, you know, what are your common photo cell options or ionization chambers for a PHS? You know, for PHS, we use the two outer cells most often. Well, what happens if you choose the center cell? Will you get overexposed or underexposed? You would get an overexposed chest because you are placing sternum, thoracic spine, and everything in between over the center cell. You are asking that equipment to penetrate fully and turn off when it's done. It's going to do that for you because that's its job. But what you fail to do as a technologist is place your part of interest over the correct cells or, number one, you didn't choose the correct cells. So your lungs, which are your area of interest, are overexposed. Lateral, th lateral cervical spine, which is why for all of my students, we don't use photo cells or photo timing for C-spine because the likelihood that you're directly over that cell is probably a little bit slim to none. If you get that anatomy right over that cell, it's gonna help you. It's gonna give you an accurate image, but what happens if you're not? If the part is in front of that cell, and basically it's got air, it's gonna shut off too early and you're gonna get an underexposed image, okay? So if technologists fail to center the part over the cell or they choose the wrong cells, we're gonna get an error. On the content specs list density settings, and I think these density controllers are not something commonly used anymore. Um, for me, that learn on film, we use them quite a bit. And the concept being your MAS controlled your density of your radiograph. And we know that's you know not a term we're using these days anymore. But if you are using your AEC, you do a lateral chest x-ray. It comes out light and you want to repeat it, but you want it to be a little bit darker. Well, when you're using your AEC, you can't set your mass. So what you could do is you could use the density settings and they're usually a plus one or plus two or minus one or minus two. And you could use the density settings and ask the AEC, can you try again and make it a little darker this time? And so those were those density settings. Um, I know a lot of you haven't ever seen them or use them, but the next time you're doing a lateral chest, look on your control options and see what you have available to you. The backup timer. Um, AEC has a backup timer. It's used to prevent overexposure to the patient, um, protect your equipment. It's a safety measure. So there is a backup timer in case it does not turn off at the appropriate sort of exposure time. It's going to be set to at least 150% to 200% over what it expects the exposure time to be for that part. If the timer is set too short, it will be an underexposure. So for my students, there's one room at 3300 Main Street that um, when you make a lateral chest x-ray on a large patient, I'll say AEC over. It's because it doesn't bump up. It doesn't see your patient. If you have a large patient, you should be bumping that up. Um, the maximum MAS allowable is 600 mass. Um, so if you get a question about a backup timer, that's what that is. Factor changes. So if you increase your MA setting, your exposure time will decrease. And you all know mass reciprocity, right? How do you calculate mass? It's MA times seconds. You know that these factors work opposite each other. If your seconds go up for, say, a breathing exposure, your MA station has to go down. If you want a shorter exposure time for, say, pediatrics, or you're trying to prevent motion, you're going to decrease your seconds, your MA has to go up. Remember, they work opposite of each other, right? If your KVP increases, your exposure time will also decrease. If your SID increases, your exposure time will increase. It's got to work a little harder to get there. If you increase your density setting, again, your exposure time is going to increase. Disadvantages. Well, AEC is wonderful, but it's not a magical unicorn. Okay, so you have to use it properly or set up your settings properly for it to actually help you. 
So we already talked about accuracy of positioning of the cells, choosing the correct cell, putting the part over the cell. Some other things that could cause um, an error with AEC could be prosthetic devices. So like your hip replacement or spinal hardware. If we know these are there, um, we need to be aware of where our um, chamber selection is or set a manual technique. It could be pathology. Um, large amounts of fluid can affect um, the AEC accuracy, like pleural effusion. If, if most of these lungs are filled with fluid and we're placing those cells maybe too low into the fluid, then it'll change um, our accuracy with exposures as well. Collimation can allow, um, can cause also an error too. So if you don't collimate, if your field is wide open, it's going to allow for too much scatter to reach the image uh, receptor. Those ionization chambers are going to fill faster the more um, kind of light field you use. So just be aware of that collimation, I think, is something simple that we can do to improve our image, reduce scatter, reduce patient dose, make sure our AEC is going to work properly, and um, things like that. So basic stuff. All right. Exposure index or range. A lot of times we use EI number, um, but remember the exposure indicator is specific to each type of equipment. And um, as technologists, you should be aware of the exposure range for the equipment that you're using. It's specific to CR and DR as well. So CR, for example, if you're using a Fuji CR plate, um, Fuji CR uses a sensitivity number and an S number. We should know that the range is an inverse relationship, meaning a high number that's over, say, 600 is actually an underexposure. You didn't use enough technique. A low number, say 75 or below, is too much technique. It's an overexposure. Digital radiography or DR has a direct relationship, meaning if your number is high, you use too much. If your number is low, you didn't use enough. So I think digital is a little bit easier to remember. Each equipment, um, like I think Shimatsu is an EI. Um, I think it's GE is a DEI. Um, Canon is a Rex. Um, AFCA is like a log mean or something like that. I can't remember all of them. And I don't think you need to worry too much about those sort of specific names, but the relationship for DR is direct, CR is inverse. And just basics, right? Underexposure would be uh, referred to as, you know, not using, not using enough. You didn't use enough technique. Uh, you didn't get enough x-ray photons to the part. So usually it's not enough mass. Remember your MAS controls your number of x-ray photons. Terminology you would see that would go under underexposure would be quantum model, quantum noise or image noise. It's got a grainy or like sandy appearance. See how this one is really fuzzy versus this one that's clear. So this is not enough mass. It's an underexposure. Overexposure we refer to as saturation. So your technique was too high. You saturated that part with too many x-ray photons. Um, and we tend to lose some soft tissue detail here or the soft tissue might get burnt out. It might be very gray, very low contrast. Um, because we overexposed it. So it'll look a little bit different than those that are um, familiar with film, but with the digital system, it's, it's not really too dark, too light. It's grainy, oversaturated. So I hope that helps.